This is the Sikkim Podcast, powered by Rogue Media Network. The Sikkim Podcast is a production of Baylor Athletics. Now, here are your hosts, Katie Smith and the voice of the Bears, John Morris. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's Sikkim Podcast, powered by Rogue Media Network. John Morris, Katie Smith, and... Special guests this week, aren't they all? But uh, mm-hmm. this one, I think you said it very well, bittersweet, tears of joy as yeah. he is leaving us in he, Baylor Athletics. Yes, our associate men's golf, or our associate head coach for men's golf, Mikkel Bjerk Indriesen. Mikkel, in the middle of a really, really busy time of the year, um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I've, uh, you know, I've been a listener since since day one, oh, since, uh, wow. since it came out. I'm a big <laughs> podcast guy, so. I was humbled to uh, to be asked. Uh, yeah. Glad to be here. Very good. All right, right off the top, Katie pronounced your name very well. Sort of the oh, Americanized well. version, thank right? You, thank very you. Well. We it only o- practiced only six took, times. Right. It only <laughs> took Katie about three years. I've been working with Katie since day one as well, so – it, but uh, she's got it down now. That's because, good. And it's funny because when I would see his name on an email, every time in my head, I knew it wasn't Bajurch, but that's how I would say it. Bajurch. <laughs> I'm like, that's not how you would say it. But tell us how you say it. Um, Full name. So I, I kind of Americanize it, say Mikael Birkendresen, but the Norwegian pronunciation is Mikkel Birkendresen. Oh, there you okay, go. Okay, Jamo, why don't you give it a try? That is really good. <laughs> no, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> that is good. And Katie would say it only took you three years to uh, get your expense reports right. But uh, that's actually, another story. But now he's so. the best we have. <laughs> actually, actually not even. I don't even have the expense reports down. Still down not. Way out, so. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, uh, that's great. <laughs> but we mentioned you are uh, you're moving on. You're going home. Tell yeah. everybody what's ahead for you and your that, family. That's right. Uh, you know, first of all, it's, it's important for me to say we have uh, stuff left to do. I'm not, I know we're going to get into it, but mm. we got a regional um, selection coming up today. We got stuff to do with our team, um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, but I was able to tell, you know, the team a couple weeks ago that uh, me and the family are moving back to Norway. That, that's back for me. That's where I'm from. Uh, my wife is from here, and you know, partly we feel like we're from here as well. We're both Baylor Bears. Mm-hmm. Matt here. We both work for Baylor. Um, so we're all green and gold, but we are uh, moving back home, which which uh, is a tough decision. Um, it, it is bittersweet. That's a good word to, to uh, put it um, because we love Baylor so much. But uh, really excited for kind of a new chapter, I guess, for our family, our two young boys, and get to know my family a little better and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, you guys are Baylor Bears and you always will be. Yeah. Talk a little bit about how you and you and Hannah met here at Baylor, right? So men's golf student athlete. But what was that first interaction like? Yeah, we met in the uh, very romantic building of Sid Rich. <laughs> <laughs> ah, um, yes. Ah, yes. <laughs> so that is a go-to on my campus tours. I actually had one yesterday. Oh. We have a visit in. So, um, yeah, I always say that. We met there at Sid Rich and um, – we happen to have a class every day together. We had one there and one in the business building. So we had mm-hmm. a, a Monday through Friday. And um, I don't know, it was, it was just meant to be and um, hit it off from there. That's 11 years ago. Wow. I've been, uh, been married almost eight now. So um, we're truly Baylor Bears. Like I said, we both work here now. And, man, it's um, it will always be a home away from home. Like walking around campus yesterday and seeing um, – Judge, uh, Judge Lady, is that, is that what I call it? Right, being? right. W- yeah. Was that was that walk in? Yeah, and, yeah. Um, man, it was. Um, it, it it is an awesome place, awesome mm-hmm. campus, and you kind of walking around campus, you reminisce back to the days of being a student and all that every yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. Very fun. So, who who made the first uh, move, first contact? <laughs> you uh, or Hannah? The, the jury's out on that one. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, but it was definitely so Hannah. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was her. <laughs> yeah. That is really cool, and she works at Baylor in uh, in HR. Correct. So yeah. I know she, they're gonna miss her also. For sure, she does a really good job. I'm very proud of. Uh, you know, the stuff she does there, she's very valued over there, and I know they're going to miss her too. But, uh, like, for me, it, it feels like we're going to have, you know, a family away from home over yeah. here in Waco too. So Yeah, yeah and you can always come back and visit us. Right. Mikhail, tell us a little bit about what you'll be doing job transition-wise when y'all move yeah, to Yeah, so I am going to be a business analyst. So I'm uh, Because of all be, the expense reports. <laughs> I'm going to be kind of a diet Katie Smith uh, <laughs> over there for a, for a uh, large company and – you know, I have ways within golf. I, I absolutely love what I do. Mm-hmm. And um, 
the people really make me love what I do. I, I love um, developing, thinking long term, seeing kids improve. And um, that's what I really burn for. But um, my family is uh, the most important thing to me and to Hannah. And when we're making this transition, um, I just need to be a dad for a while. Mm-hmm. And and uh, we're moving home. We're moving you know, to different continent for Hannah and everything. And I don't want another job where I'm gone a hundred nights a year, even though I love it. Mm. So I'm, I'm really excited to be, uh, you know, home at night and, um, you know, just, just be a dad for a while, but I'm excited about the work too, but I know I'll, I'll be missing so much about this profession. It's, it's so awesome, but, uh, it is hard to combine with the family at times, and, and that's what I need to do now. Yeah, well respected there. Mm-hmm. Speaking of your boys, tell us about them. How, how old are they? Axel's three and a half. He's a wild man. <laughs> he's, a, he's a bird dog. It, you know, you need to let him out three times a day or everybody goes crazy, but he's he's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and then uh, Anders is 15 months, so uh, just wild household. Um, but uh, – both are a lot of fun. Yeah. Full, full throttle. Yeah. Well, I know I can speak for everyone on this hallway that it, whenever you would bring Axel by, that just made everyone's week. <laughs> I was fun. like, let's oh, yeah. just yeah, go it's home. Fun for it's us. so fun. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's got the Texan side of <laughs> never meeting a stranger. You know, he's not very Norwegian on that part. He, <laughs> he will talk to anybody all day. So. I love that. And Ender's probably a little young to swing a golf club, but Axel, does he does he play? Uh, they both do. Yeah, wow. Axel uh, Axel got real golf clubs. I mean, that's his most prized possession. Wow, he, at three and a half. Oh. <laughs> uh, he, um, you know, he calls himself a golf boy. So, <laughs> you know, in in what I do, you FaceTime a lot. You yeah. know, you're on the road a lot, and he always wants to see the what he calls the golf boys and, oh. and talk to them. And he's like, "I'm a golf boy. I'm oh. I'm a Baylor Bear." And that is great. That, I that's, love that. That's that's big for him. So he loves coming to the golf course. But uh, we have some plastic clubs and just hang out in the backyard a lot. And Anders has started swinging too. So. That's amazing yeah. that they can learn so young. Talk about that a little bit, the golf boys, right? What is it like raising your sons, getting to, to have them around these Baylor student-athletes, or what has it been like? Yeah, it's, a, it's a big privilege uh, on both ends. Um, mm. I do think it's really healthy for the guys to see a family. Yeah. You know, they're they're gone from their families for the first time ever, most of them. Mm. And, um, you know, we all fall short of uh, what we – uh, the perfect coach, the perfect parent. We all we all fall short of of all those things, but we try our best, and I think it's it's really important for the guys to see the other side of you yeah. as a coach. That you are a parent, you are a husband, you are, you know, a family man, and sometimes you just have to bring them together. Like mm. yeah. you just have to bring the kids to the golf course because uh, daycare is closed, and Hannah is working a full time job, and you just kind of make it work just mm-hmm. like with coaching and with the team. Sometimes it's not perfect. Um, sometimes school is not perfect, whatever life happens and you got to make it work and make the best of it. So I think that's healthy. And then for the boys, like my boys, Axel and Anders, it's obviously really, really cool for them. And, um, like I told you guys about, like Axel talks about the golf boys a lot. Like that's a big deal <laughs> so to him. Cute. It's a really big deal to him. So, I'm proud of both sides. I am really proud of our players of of how they, you know, ask me constantly, you know, how's the family mm-hmm. and whatever, because they know what's what's the most important yeah. to me. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been just really healthy. It's awesome. What was the reaction? I mean, it's just been the last couple of weeks, right, yeah. that you made it public and and told the team and told everybody that you're leaving. Um, interested in the reaction of your team? Yeah, it was really hard. To, uh, to tell them so that was the day I dreaded the most yeah um and the reaction was uh, obviously very nice and um I guess emotional at times and stuff like that and it was um well very well respected from them um it was important for me to to tell them why I, I think that's important and and they deserve to know why and it's um you know my longing for coming back to the place I grew up, my entire family is there. Um, I speak solely in a region to my kids and mm. it's always been a big part of me. And so that was important for me to explain. And then my gratitude for them was very important for me to explain too, and kind of take some time and tell them just how appreciative I am of coach McGraw of mm. each and every one of them. Um, 
and then the last point is that we're not done yet like i i am here 100 percent till i have to get on a plane and get over there and i want them to be that too so whatever energy came out of this i want it to be channeled to what we have left to do and the last point is i know somebody great will be in my seat uh, come fall like coach mcgraw is um deservingly so one of the absolutely mostly respected coaches in the country he's going to have the pool that we need and i've kind of we put our heads together and and uh I, i'm definitely a big part of the process of finding my replacement and he's going to have some strengths that are you know stronger than mine and mm -hmm. some things that i fall short of and um it will be great so i i know a really good person will be in my seat in the fall too yeah, I, I think they're going to be big shoes to fill, though, yeah, if, when, when we look at you, Mikkel. But you mentioned Coach McGraw, and we'll go back kind of to y'all's history. But talking about y'all y'all just have such a special relationship. What is it like getting to work day in and day out with Mike McGraw? Um, well, I'll uh, say the good things first. <laughs> he, he is an awesome person. Um, and you guys know this. You, you've worked with him for a long time, but he is exactly who he portrays himself to be. And so um, I, I told JMO before we started recording, I think Coach is an extremely hard worker. I haven't been around as hard a worker as Coach, but he's also an extremely caring person. And that combination I think is rare, personally. And I think that's why the players, the players, when you spend so much time as we do around our players, they see through you. They see your intentions if you're not um, perfectly genuine. But coach truly is and he wants the best for each and every one in the program and that starts in recruiting and it goes well beyond you're done here so he, he truly is that person that he portrays to be um and so that's probably the the thing i respect the most about coach mcgraw and then what it's like working with him it's uh, very very predictable <laughs> <laughs> he, nice. he is the most predictable person that's funny. so i know him so well i know exactly what he's <laughs> about to say at any point in time yeah and uh you don't know coach mcgraw fully until you've driven in a <laughs> up front in a van from Waco <laughs> to Hutchinson, Kansas, up <laughs> I-35. Oh, wow. Right. And he tells you at every single st uh, stop what he's done in Oklahoma his entire <laughs> life. And, oh, that used to be a steakhouse, and this tree was there. And yeah. Y you don't know him fully till you've done that. I've, <laughs> I've done that several times, and right. I know him in and out. Uh, are you, like, guessing now? You're like, yes, I know that was your steakhouse. Yes, I know these yes, things. Right. <laughs> yeah, you and Mike Holder ate there. And <laughs> yeah, I, I know. And yeah, you, s you were on that carousel, and I, I know. That's, That's so amazing. funny. Yeah. From a guy who remembers everything, everything. you yes. know, that memory of Mike McGraw's is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So yes. that would make travel really fun. And you have the perspective of uh, you were a, a student athlete here, golfer, four-year letter winner, 2012 to 2015. And your last year was Mike's first year, right? Correct. So you played with him. What do you remember about maybe first meeting or, you know, him just coming in? And you're in that role as a student athlete. Yeah. Sure, yeah. I love Coach Priest, um, and I still keep in touch with him, Nita and the kids, and um, I love my experience with him. And so I was sad when he was leaving, mm. and I was I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and then uh, we see this, like, really mean-looking mock-up of uh, Coach McGraw. From, uh, <laughs> you know, you put some sort of uh, Baylor shirt on, on this picture of him right. from Alabama. Yeah. But it doesn't represent who he is at all because he looked like, you know, uh, um, sort of, yeah, whatever. Intimidating but figure. Yeah. For sure. For sure intimidating. <laughs> um, but uh, he came in and I knew very early on that this was a fantastic coach and great person. And he elevated our program right away. Um, he's just got a, an energy about him. He absolutely loves what he does. Uh, going back to the genuine part, I mean, you can't do what he does day in, day out without absolutely loving what it does, and it's about the people. And uh, when you're around him for a couple of weeks, uh, you know. And he is a fantastic coach too. I mean, he elevated all of us on the uh, in the program and planted a little seed for me to become a coach too. You know, because of um, you know what I saw, what it did to me and my teammates, and found that very inspirational for me.
That's great. Yeah, it really is. You mentioned earlier, Coach Priest, talk about your recruiting process. What drew you to Baylor as a student athlete? Go go way back if you can even remember that far. <laughs> I can, barely. <laughs> um, you guys might remember a, um, I call him small angry, uh, but uh, great guy. One of my better <laughs> friends, Joachim Mickelson. Yeah, from, uh, exactly. From right, right. right. Great player, all American. Big what you call champion. big angry? No, small, small angry. Small <laughs> angry. Sorry. He, he'll, small he'll, angry. He'll say that himself. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, big angry. I'm not. I'm not throwing him under the bus. <laughs> but he he's from Norway, and I didn't really know him um, personally growing up because I was a late bloomer in the game. I did other stuff. I played soccer, biathlon, cross country skiing, whatever. Oh wow. So I came in kind of late into the Norwegian junior team and stuff like that. So he was uh, three years older than me. But uh, Coach Priest, I guess, went with a strategy of I want another Norwegian. I want to leverage the situation I have with Joachim mm. because he's such a good player, and I'm sure I can attract some talent. And uh, luckily, like, I I got contacted, and Baylor was the first school that contacted me. Mm. And Joachim helped me um, kind of tell me the truth about everything, which I appreciated. And Coach Priest did too. It's just you talk to a coach, of course, they're going to shine the best light on everything. Mm. And uh, I got recruited by other schools too, but I always felt a draw to Baylor for some reason, even though I didn't really know Joachim and didn't know Coach Priest and um, ended up coming here. It kind of out of the blue, I, I didn't really know what the Big 12 Conference is mm. or this or that. or You sort of know what Division One is. I knew I wanted it to go in the South because I wanted to develop my game. And that's it. And just, you know, I got super fortunate to end up here with great teammates, coaches, campus, school. I mean, everything um, without even having a clue of what I was going to. Yeah. Mm. How about that? Did you, uh, when you were being recruited, did you come and make an official visit? Or sometimes you might sign, you know, sight unseen, not yeah. even visiting here. Yeah. I did. So I verbally committed and I came on, a, on an official visit on the sort of, verbal agreement that like hey why don't you um commit to the scholarship offer come on a visit see if you like it yeah. no no pressure sure mm. and um i mean being in the coaching industry now of course that's i know that's a good way of for a coach to kind of go about it but there's nothing i didn't love about being here and i mean I didn't have second thoughts at all of course and signed a few weeks after that during the early signing period good what was the adjustment yeah. like coming from Norway? And where in Norway? What city? Uh, I'm, be I'm from just outside of Oslo. Okay. Oh, Oslo. We can say Oslo. that. That yeah. one you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was that adjustment like coming from Oslo, Norway to Waco, Texas? Yeah, tough, but also um, very doable, I guess. I mean, listen, this is the thing with, with uh, life life changes, and I, I'm trying to speak like I'm an old wise guy. I'm just 30 <laughs> and don't really know what I'm doing, but – you're a pretty wise guy. Every, I think so too. Yeah. Every, young wise guy. Yeah. Everything you do, every big decision you do, you you don't get rid of your problems. You just sub out your problems for a different set of problems. Mm. So every place has their ups and downs and things you got to adjust to. And I knew I wanted to come play college golf because it's the best arena to develop my game, to play at the highest level. I was re very fortunate to come to Baylor, a great school in the Big 12 competitive, good facilities, all those things. So I knew those were awesome. The adjustment is being 5,000 miles away from my family, mm. uh, studying in another language. Mm. You know, yeah. I my English was strong at the time, but not academically strong. So, like, my first semester I was in theater appreciation, which should be an easy class. Right. Mm -hmm. But for me it wasn't because it's so language-based. Huh. Yeah. So that was, for example, a, a funny class that I sort of struggled with because – um, just that second level of language understanding kind of was tough. I should probably have been in more math classes or mm -hmm. stuff that is more international to start off with. But as soon as I made those adjustments and kind of got there, I mean, it was it was fairly easy for me. I felt safe on campus. I felt like I had great teammates and mm -hmm. good culture. And yeah, school was tough, but it's it's supposed to be. You know, you're supposed to get a degree that that counts and um so yeah i mean things were challenging but um in a good way was your family ever to ever able to come from norway, norway to watch you compete while you were playing here not compete yeah. this is um 
maybe interesting for it, you know people from here to hear. But my mom has uh, watched me play golf one time. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, isn't yeah. it, to think yeah. about? My dad would watch me uh, some more, but yeah. um, uh, they came to visit. My dad came once at least during college and i believe my mom came twice and has come a couple times after college to to visit kids and stuff like that yeah yeah nice very good mikhail burek and is our Beautiful. guest thank you <laughs> baylor uh, men's golf associate head coach on the sikkim podcast i've had the privilege of calling games telling stories about baylor athletics for a long time storytelling is an art and there's a network in town doing just that Rogue Media Network has produced over 80 original podcasts and shows ranging from comedy, true crime, business, and sports. If there is a story to tell, Rogue Media Network is telling it. You can find this podcast and all the other great Rogue Media Network shows on Spotify, on Apple, on YouTube, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Mikkel Bjork Andreessen here with us. You talked about how Coach McGraw kind of planted that seed of being interested in a career in coaching early on. Tell us about that SFA job kind of came right out of school, right? What did that look like? How did you get that opportunity there? Walk us through that. Yeah, uh, we were in Nacogdoches, which is where my wife is from. So those who know about Nacogdoches do, it's a very small town. <laughs> it's obviously the home of SFA, Division One school and I was playing professional golf and that was a tough time for me out of college you know won't go into all the stuff but there was there were things going on with the family and um you know Hannah and I just got married we were just into that and uh, different things um and so I was struggling as a professional and then that job came open that following year after my graduation in 2016 and so coach called me and said hey I really believe you will enjoy this. I think you'll be really good as a coach. I think you should give it a shot. You know, where are you at with your professional golf? And initially I kind of thought that I didn't want to because I, I felt like I had unfinished business in professional golf. Mm. And um, the more I thought about it and the more I kind of let it stew and talk to Hannah and everybody around, like it was very clear that this job doesn't come open like that. It doesn't fall in your lap like this. Mm. And again, it was just another incident of, of uh, kind of things being at the right place at the right time. And Coach McGraw was at the center of it and uh, made a call to the coach and uh, co Coach Trey Schrader at SFA. And I ended up getting that job and kind of falling into coaching on kind of, kind of the premise of, hey, I want to try this, mm -hmm. but still kind of play. And I just absolutely loved it. It was it was a time of my life where I needed to be outside of myself, and mm. that gave me the opportunity to invest in other people and be part of a team again and give to other people of my effort, and it gave me so much more back, and I was instantly so much more happy, and I knew that this was what I wanted to pursue. So um, that was just a really fun year. I was the assistant for both programs, men's and women's. It was wild. I mean, we are traveling. <laughs> all the time practicing yeah. twice a day and goodness but man it was so much fun i wouldn't change it for anything and um yeah just really fortunate for for that to happen that way then from there to texas tech right correct three years at texas tech correct did well there recruited really well help me with the guy's name that's that's the ncaa uh, uh, killing it right now for tech ludwig aberg yeah yeah, yeah he recruited him wow. to mm -hmm. texas tech wow right uh, and everything's a team job, you know. Right. We're we're two coaches, and so we recruit together everything. So I won't I won't take all the credit, but yeah, we had a lot of success. It was a lot of fun as well. Greg Sands, one of my best friends, is the head coach out there. Awesome coach. Um, and so it, that was just a year into my coaching career that we got that offer to go out and didn't really see ourselves leaving Nacogdoches, but it was just hey, I I really feel a calling for this, and I want to you know, pursue this. So, man, those three years were awesome. Um, and so much fun. Also wild, like really fast, uh, very competitive. We compete at a high level, achieved number one ranking, you know, all, all those things and had our failures as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and then had the opportunity to come here, which, um, coach McGraw, 
Baylor University. We both graduated from here. It was closer to Hannah's family. We just had our first child. Like mm. everything was great. It w- it was tough to leave Texas Tech, just like it's tough leaving now because you've become so personal in this job with both who you're working with and all the players. So that was tough. And to be honest with you, this might be like uh, um, I don't know, not not the perfect thing to say, but I still feel like I cheer for that Texas Tech team sure. to this day. Mm-hmm. And so I know that's how I'll feel about this team for sure. Yeah. Like this is my program. I played here, coached here. So, I mean, 30 years from now, I'll feel that way yeah. strongly about this team for sure and, and all the guys on it. Yeah, that's really awesome. How? What's kind of the biggest change from your time as a student athlete here to then when you came back and, and coached at Baylor? Maybe program facilities, what changed the most? The most obvious one is the Billy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that place. That is great. I wish my office was in the Billy. Yeah. I told you that before. It is. It, is <laughs> it would be fun. No one, no one took me up on it, but I'm still putting it out there. It is so good. Um, Coach McGraw and Jay Goebel uh, building that and fundraising and, you know, getting the help they need, but also a lot of work on, mm-hmm. on both of their parts. And I know how hard Coach McGraw worked for that facility. And it is just uh, amazing that they've gotten it done. And it is such an asset for both our programs, men's and women's golf. And, man, it's been in pristine condition this mm-hmm. entire spring. Mm-hmm. And we really needed it because we're struggling with some golf courses in town. Yeah, Ridgewood Ridge Ridge being Woods closed. Yeah. Yeah. Closed, and the others are kind of struggling with conditions. And Joe Tadaro's kept it in excellent condition, doing an awesome job. And, man, what an asset that is. And it's so close to campus. So that is an obvious one. I will say the tournament schedule has improved since my time, and that's, again, a credit to Coach McGraw and Mm -hmm. getting in those things. And um, I think the standard has increased, like the competitive standard and expectation has increased a little bit too in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the guys believe even more than we did that they belong on a national stage. And we're good this year. We're not great yet. We hope to prove this postseason that we can be great and uh, we're close to it but we're building something really really strong and I believe in this team for the next few years and um, that we can do some really great things the Billy for people who don't know is the Billy Williams golf facility uh, down University Parks Drive it's uh, if you're trying to imagine where that is if you don't know it's sort of right by the equestrian center so very nice and and uh easy to get to from campus that's a big plus isn't it for sure it's massive you see our guys do a lot of two days yeah it was a football term i guess right um which you don't really do that much in golf because usually it's 25 minutes to a country club and you got to get dressed the right way and blah blah and you know you got to bring your clubs and now you see our guys getting an hour in between classes in a t-shirt practicing and there's huge value to that, I think. Um, so, And then just the way it's designed, how functional it is, and the condition it's been in, we get quality work in every day. Both yeah. programs, 20 players get yeah. quality work in every day. Wow. And probably such a recruiting advantage. Do you notice when recruits come and see the Billy that they're kind of, you know, impressed, taken aback, shocked? Without a doubt. Yeah, that's sure. awesome. Mm. Didn't you have to, uh, yeah, with Ridgewood closed this year, Ridgewood Country Club here in Waco, you'd be out there a lot, but they're redoing everything. So they've been closed. That wasn't available. So Coach McGraw said you all kind of made your own, <laughs> made, your, made the Billy, right? Is it called the Billy? Um, so it, it has uh, several names. Oh, okay. <laughs> this would be good. Uh, <laughs> Billy National is probably Billy the National. most you know, That's I like awesome. It. Um, so, yeah, it's a par 60 course. I designed it. Um, put a lot of work in and thought into <laughs> just the traffic and the flow. And right, I, I take right. great pride in deciding or <laughs> designing it. And so I kind of like to poke fun at the guys and try and get some uh, compliments, some forced compliments on the design <laughs> right, of the golf course. Right. <laughs> Would you know, stopping by the bathroom after such and such hole. And, oh, my um, goodness. But, yeah, it's um, – I'd say it's the hardest golf course in Waco. <laughs> nice. It, it really is, and the conditions are great and tough and – um, par 60, so there's a lot of par 3s and then some par 4s. Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah, just a tough golf course, great test, and good for us to practice on. Nice. That is yeah. great. That is really cool. All right, uh, answers this, working with Coach McGraw and leaving him. I know how 
much he respects you and how much he is going to miss you. He said that recently on our coaches show. What what are some of the things you'll take with you from your time with Mike McGraw? Um, well, there's there's so much. I mean, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, I'm an earlier lunch eater than I used to be. <laughs> I, I had a record that I put on my whiteboard one day. He announced he was headed out to lunch at 9.07 a.m. <laughs> I was like, Coach, you're, you're going to have to go to that one by yourself. That's the I'm record. sorry. You can't join him. Um, no, but uh, on a serious note, I mean, how he treats people is just a great example. I think nothing can beat that. Uh, the X's and O's and all those things uh, can't measure up to just who you are as a person, how genuine you are, and how you treat people just day in, day out. We, I mean, we get in a lot of tricky situations as coaches. I mean, every coach will know this. You got to recruit. You got to pick teams. You got to mm. make decisions that aren't popular. You, you have ten guys. You'd be amazed at how many things happen in a in a team throughout a year. There's ten guys that are living away from home for the first time for a full year. Time and pressure. Yep. Things yeah. are happening. So um, the way the grace and the the genuineness of how he handles situations, how he handles people, um, how much he gives back to our game. I think those are the main things that will stick with me. And then there are obviously a lot of small things about, um, you know, how how he does things and operates and his journaling and his uh, meticulousness and um, just his discipline and all those things that will stick with me. But I think overall, um, just how genuine he is and he's had a good effect on me. Yeah. A lot of us, I mean, anybody that knows him really could say the same thing, you in particular, because you've been so close to him. And you know the feeling is mutual. Here is uh, from Coach Mike McGraw from our Baylor Coaches Show just last week uh, when we were talking about you and your departure from the golf program. Yeah, Mikel will be taking his family, his wife and Hannah and their two kids, their two boys, uh, back to Norway. He's had a longing, I think, he's been in, in – the United States for 12 years, but he's had a longing, I think, to go back and raise children in his home country, which I think all of us can understand. Mm -hmm. And Mikel is is not just a loss for Baylor golf by going home. Uh, he's a loss for college golf. Mm -hmm. He is easily the most respected, uh, one of the most respected uh, young assistant or associate head coaches in the country. Uh, everybody looks to him for uh, answers to problems. He's a creative thinker. He's extremely calm. He's amazing for our student athletes. He's got great perspective. And I told the guys last week in a team meeting when Mikel finally announced it, um, you just got a master class in how you, how you handle life, how you are a great father, how you're a great husband, and the fact that you want to be a great coach, but for you, the 110 nights a year you're away from home is more than you really want to do and you want he wants to raise his children mm -hmm. and i reminded all our guys that's the most important job in the world mm -hmm. it's not coaching golf it's not just nothing else could be as important as being a great parent and mikhail is that wow that's very very well said i know you appreciate him and the contributions he's made to your program yeah he's i mean you know it's funny you're always told that you should hire people that are smarter than you. And I did do that with Mikel. He's way smarter than I am. I've got experience on him and I've got mm -hmm. some other things that, but he's really creative, extremely smart. He's an analytical thinker. He's uh, funny. Oh my goodness. He's <laughs> got a great uh, sense of humor. Our guys are missing him already, but he's committed to uh, finishing out the season and going with us to the national championship. And I'm, I'm, we're going to miss him, that's for sure. But he's, he's just been a great addition. He played golf here at Baylor. My first year at Baylor was his senior year. And then when uh, we had an opening when Ryan Blagg went to Louisville, yeah. he was the guy to hire. Isn't that great? I mean, a great compliment uh, to you from Coach Mike McGraw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't, I didn't uh, get to hear it live, but um, no, I, I know he appreciates me. And um, the feeling is obviously mutual. I mean – on on and off work on and off the course i mean we know where we have each other so very nice very nice well we wish you nothing but the best and we appreciate your time here and like you said you and hannah and axel and anders are baylor bears for life and we want to see those guys and watch them grow up it'll be from a distance yeah. but come back and see us when you can yeah it's really cool
hearing all of this about your transition, we talk so much at Baylor about preparing champions for life and that there are so many things our student athletes get to experience that are going to help them in their future career, that are going to help them as parents down the road and to see you kind of doing this live right in front of them. What an awesome example. So Mikkel, we're so thankful for your time at Baylor. We're so excited to see the rest of y'all season pan out and thanks for taking the time with us. Well, thank you. I appreciate both you guys. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate everybody in this department. Baylor Nation out there, so thank you. Very nice. And you're not done yet. You guys are moving on into the NCAA, yeah. so good luck there. That's right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have you been looking for a new podcast to listen to? Are you interested in true crime, funny one-star reviews, or inspiring stories? What about the history of Waco or the famous people who have lived and worked here? All these and more are produced by Rogue Media Network. There are over 80 different shows, including this one, with more coming all the time. If there's a story to tell, Rogue Media Network is telling it. Watch on YouTube or listen now wherever you get your podcasts. All right, very fun. We started by saying uh, bittersweet, yeah. and it is, but we uh, we love Mikel and his family and wish them nothing but the best as they move on. And they are continuing into the NCAA, so uh, wish uh, Baylor men's golf and women's golf nothing but the best there. Yeah, exciting time of year. Excited for the Bjork Andreessen family and just – Love the impact Mikel has made on so many people during his few years here. Yeah, very much so. So thanks to Mikel, our guest today. For Katie, I'm John, and that is this week's Sikkim Podcast, powered by Rogue Media Network. You've been listening to the Sikkim Podcast, powered by Rogue Media Network. The Sikkim Podcast is a production of Baylor Athletics.